Hey, Shalom, Brother Ara coming to you with another video. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. And that's all praises to the Heavenly Father through the name of the Only Begotten Son, through the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible and who rule well. Shalom to all you Akim and you Akwa, those are the hopeful elect that are seeking for salvation. And the title of the lesson is called, There is Great Power in the Names of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shai. There's great power in those names. And the power is unmeasurable. Remember, the Lord is an, an omnipotent power, uh, unlimited you know, powers. You know, there's nothing uh, impossible to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. But there's a reason why I'm bringing out this particular, you know, lesson through the spirit is uh, focusing on the name. You know, the names would be given in these last days as it was, as it was prophesied, you know, throughout the scriptures. Now, we're going to bring that out, Lord willing, but I want to get Psalm 148 and 13. I want to build from there. When you see Psalm 148 and 13, it says, let them praise the name of the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. For his name alone is excellent. Let me put my phone on. Do not disturb. Just be on the safe side because I have a feeling somebody's going to bother. <laughs> somebody's going to interrupt the lesson. So um, going back to Psalm 148 and 13, it says, let them praise the name of the Lord. Okay. For his name alone is excellent. Let's go into the word excellent. Okay, it says to be high, to be inaccessibly high. Now, here's the point. The one that I want to get, the definition that really stood out. All right, you see safe right there, but it's the one strong. Excellent goes back to another one of the definitions is strong. When you look at the definition strong, it says having the power to move heavy weights or perform other physical demanding tasks it says able to withstand great force or pressure uh the main thing i want to bring out is powerful okay powerful so the name of the lord is excellent it's powerful now we believe and know that to be true you know obviously but in these times as the hopeful elect the main thing what the, the hopeful elect would be doing in these last days is calling on that name and not only calling on that name, but believing in the name. And that comes with a standard, the standard. It comes with the mentality, integrity and power. Now, when you read, read on, it says his glory is above the earth and heaven. Verse 14, he also exalted the horn of his people. Exalted means to lift up, okay, the power of his people and exalting the power of his people who are the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are scattered across the four corners of the earth. One of the ways or the way to do that is through the names that comes with a power in itself. So we are at one with our power as you see the great awakening taking place and this is speaking of the hopeful let because all of the nation of Israel is not going to wake up on this side. Okay? But the scriptures say the elect shall praise that the holy name. And that's, you see examples of that happening in these times. It says the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him, praise ye the Lord. So the Lord took his name from us for a period of time. And, you know, it's a, it's a humbling but yet beautiful experience for us to have the names in these last days. And it's covering so many great things in these um, last days of this wicked rulership as you see the power shift taking place. Now, when you read the scripture here, uh, Judges, Judges 3 and 9, it says, And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord... The Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel who delivered them even uh, off the nil, the son of Kanaz, Caleb's younger brother. This is an example in the time of Judges. We kept going into captivity, you know, and being um, 
you know, put under our uh, in, into captivity under our enemies. You know, um, one of the main en en enemies were the Hamites, so-called Africans, you know, who was dwelling in the in the near land. So the Lord, when we went off and start, started serving idols, you know, <clears throat> eventually the Lord, you know, we would repent to the Lord and call on his name. We would cry unto him and he would send forth a deliverer to deliver us out of, you know, from captivity. And, you know, that's the story throughout, you know, the beginning of Judges. And I'm going to read on again. It says, and the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he judged Israel and went out to war and the Lord delivered Cushan, uh, Cushan, Rashath them, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Cushan, Cushan, Rasha, Atham, Salakia, for butchering that. But it says, and the land rested forty years, and Othniel the son of Kenaz died. Verse twelve says, and the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened. Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. So we started going back to being wicked as hell, going off, serving idols, doing all these different outlandish, wicked, evil things and offended the Lord. And the Lord put us right back into captivity. This time, as you see in the example, was under the king Moab. All right. The Moab Moab are the so-called Chinese. So all every time we went off, the Lord would eventually put us under captivity, you know, um, from one of the heathen nations. So the point of me bringing that out was that we still had the Lord's name would eventually resort to, you know, calling on the names and the Lord heard us and delivered us out of captivity. Now, <clears throat> what happened? What did the Lord tell Jeremiah that would eventually happen to us? We read Jeremiah 17 and 4 it says, and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, uh, which shall burn forever. The Lord saw that we were disingenuous with, you know, our repentance. You know, we, we would, you know, call on the Lord. As you've seen examples in Judges, the Lord would deliver us. And then we'll be wicked again at some point in time. And then uh, the Lord will put it, you know, punish us for it. And then we'll call on the Lord's name again. So the Lord's like, you know what? I'm going to discontinue you from your heritage. You ain't going to know your nationality, who you are. You're not even going to know the names to call on. Remember, the names are excellent. It's power in those names. All right. There's a standard. There's a mentality. There's a, a force, uh, you know. So the Lord said, I'm going to strip you from even knowing my name. So you can't call on it for a long period of time. Thus, you got to sit in your punishment uh, till the Lord you know, ended that time, you know, so, so the Lord was angry for us for a period of time. So now what you see is, uh, the great awakening, uh, amongst the, you know, the hopeful elect, the Israelites. And when you read, um, Baruch, the third chapter, okay, Baruch, the third chapter, it says, and this is one of my favorite, uh, chapters here, but Baruch 3 and 1 says, O Lord Almighty, power of Israel, a soul in anguish, this troubled spirit crieth unto thee. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy, for thou art merciful, and have pity upon us, because we have sinned before thee. And we are acknowledging our sins, you know, speaking of the hopeful elect. And we see that we have we went off, man. We went off. Verse 3 says, For thou endurest forever, and we perish utterly. You know, the Lord destroyed us, and rightfully so. For being wicked, um, idol worshiping, you know, um, just going away from from the ways of the Lord and serving these heathen gods. So the Lord punishes us severely, man, and which we deserve. The Deuteronomy 28 chapter goes into the curses that the Lord put upon us that we could not escape, by the way. Being carted over in cargo slave ships, you know, the <clears throat> first one's fired, last one's hired, having to go into the to the enemy in the one of all things, you know, uh, the division amongst the, the families of Israel, right? The family structure all fucked up. Excuse my language. You know, that's what happened as a result. Now, verse three says, for thou endurest forever and we perish utterly. And then verse four says, O Lord Almighty, thou power of Israel, hear now the prayers of the dead Israelites and of their children, 
which have sinned before thee and not hearken unto the voice of thee, their power for the which caused these plagues cleave unto us. Those curses, you know, for us being wicked and committing iniquities. Verse five says, remember not the iniquities of our forefathers, but think upon thy power and thy name at this time. Verse six, for thou art the Lord, our power and thee, O Lord, will we praise. Verse seven says, and for this cause, thou has put thy fear in our hearts to the intent that we should call upon thy name. So now you see that the the period of us being destroyed and going through punishment is coming to an end. The Lord is raising up, you know, his people, starting with the hopeful elect. You know, when you read Ezekiel, the 37 chapter, it, you know, goes into how the spirit of uh, the breath of life will enter into them. Right. Speaking of the hopeful elect and um, the Lord was sent forth, you know, Elder Abba Bivens, which we know to be, you know, Elijah in reincarnation. OK, which eventually we would get the names back. You know, it started with the Lord putting the spirit of fear in our hearts, our minds to serve him and be obedient. And in the process, finding out who we are as a nation of Israel. And then we would get the names back. All right. So the names are it is extremely important what comes with the name again a standard the standard the mentality the hope the power and praise thee in our captivity so the nation of israel would then get the names back while the nation of israel would be in captivity and we are in that time for we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers that sinned before thee so we also remember back, we are our forefathers coming back in reincarnation, you know, through this knowledge that's been given to us, you know, through uh, our teachers in which the Lord gave, you know, <clears throat> revealed the secrets, the mysteries, all right, to our teachers, okay, and their teachers, again, being passed down. And then and we, re we realize that we, we are those people in the scriptures that we read in Judges that was going off, committing iniquities, etc., the history of the Israelites being disobedient. So in the process of us getting back the names and we also remember how wicked we were, you know, and how we are those people. OK, verse eight says, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers, which departed from the Lord, our power. So now that we see that the, the end of this punishment is coming, the names are also a controversy amongst Israel because Esau, the elites particularly know that those names, the names Yahweh, while Yahweh Shai are unstoppable forces, right? And that is a key indication that the power shift is happening that the nation of Israel is truly waking up. Okay. The nation of Israel is truly waking up and Esau knows the elites, particularly they know, uh, they know that that is a threat to their, uh, uh, kingdom. Right. It was all good. When we was calling on JC. It was all good. Right. But then the Lord revealed the true names. And then Esau, you know, he started he, he started getting on the defense because he knows when we start calling those names, that's <laughs> that's when the power shift begins to happen. John 17 and six says, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were and thou gavest them me and they have kept have kept thy word. Manifest means to be made known. To make known by teaching, the name would be retaught to, you know, the men, all right, the men that, the, the prophets, the leaders of Israel, in which those names would be broken down, revealed, uh, uh, given the faith to believe on those names, and then it would be passed down to the rest of the nation of Israel, all right. It says, expose the view, make manifest to show oneself appear. All right. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking here. Yahweh Shai 
revealed the names unto specific men who would then pass it down. All right. Who, by the way, have always believed in those names who were just coming back in their lot in the reincarnation back into believing the names. Now this being back revealed to the nation of Israel. Verse seven says, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So now that we got the names back, we through the spirit and power, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, are becoming one with our power and we can't be stopped. As long as we continue to be, believe in the names, we cannot be stopped. That's why Esau is making his moves. He knows that his time is short. One of the ways is through the, us calling on the names Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai. Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The names have to be believed on and called, confessed, proclaimed in order for salvation to be performed. Right. Salvation cannot be performed unless the names will be revealed and believed on for the elect, because that's who will be saved. Esau does not want to want his position his, of power removed. But he has no choice. So he's trying to stop us from believing on those names and calling on those names. That's why you have leaders who've always sold out in past times. Who are being used as pawns to try to stop certain, you know, the, the nation of Israel from calling on those names. Great things happen when those names are being called on. And Esau does not want to, his power, his position removed. He wants us to continue to be at the bottom underneath him you know uh in, in rulership he doesn't want to give up his kingdom but he has no choice the lord is not going to be giving us the names um without a purpose okay now that we are, are coming out of captivity right second ezra six and nine i'll close out on this second ezra six and nine says for esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Esau is the progenitor of the Edomites. And the elites know, know that their time is up, that their rulership, their age, that's what the word world goes back to, is almost up. In the process of his world coming to an end, you're going to see, it, then you're going to go through history and see that we would be taken down. You know, we would be in captivity for a long time which we're still to this day in captivity but there's a great transitioning happening in which we are getting ready to get the kingdom which was promised to us you know our forefathers which we are our forefathers coming back in reincarnation is about to be established forever so of course the names would have to be called on because a great deliverance is about to be performed and glory honor praises you know uh respect you know of those names that's excellent right is about to be established forever it's going to have to be a time and point a point in time we're going to call on those names and that this, this is the time okay and the names are going to be called on forever all right forever psalm 148 13 let them praise the name of the lord that's what we're doing you know even in our captivity, we're praising, calling on Yahweh by Shem Abishai. For his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. And we're seeing that. The underdogs who the world sees as underdogs, the nation of Israel, no one thinks we're going to rule. Everybody thinks that oh, either the Moabites, the Chinese going to rule, or the, the, the Russians, you know, or may think other, you know, Esau is going to be able to extend his kingdom or whatever. But they don't realize that the, the ones that are going to rule is Yahweh Shai's people. Yahweh Shai, King David, men on down, right? And we see that the names are being called upon. And there's power, great power, the unstoppable forces being, you know, uh, uh, revealed in these times. Okay? Just want to do a lesson going into there's power in the names Yahweh while Yahweh Shai. All praises to Yahweh by Shemiah Bashai, double honor to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.